everyone. Today we are going to transform trigonometric function and this is the graphing form of trigonometric function. As you can see here it, it, it has a sine on it but it can also be cosine or it can also be tangent. So um, that's the part right there. A sine and then there's a parentheses and then H and K. Now you can see that H and K have been like talked about in our class before. Um, H refers to the movement of the graph left and right and then the K is the movement of graph up and down. On this side right here, we have the parent graph. So parent graph is only one cycle. Please remember that for trigonometric function, it's gonna go to infinity. So the cycle is gonna go to infinity on one side, it's gonna go to infinity on the other side. And then another thing, um, this, um, um, this picture that we have here, they all have dots on them. This is actually divided into quadrant, first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. Now, if you may wonder, how did we get all of these, um, how did we get all of these shapes, and how did we, how were we able to graph all these parent function here? There's a lot of, there's a lot of videos that talks about uh, how to complete a table for um, um, sine function and how to sketch the graph or the parent graph of um, the trigonometric function. There's like a ton of video over there. I put I put them in um, into the description box below as part of the library. So feel free to visit those videos and um, I will put all the links of those videos in the description box below. Okay, so um, these are the steps that we are going to do in order that we can um, graph any trigonometric function. So first, we have to determine the amplitude. Amplitude refers to how high or how low the uh, graph is. How high, that's amplitude, or how low, that's the amplitude. Next, the midline. The midline K refers to the line that connects the topmost part and the low, the, the lowest part right here. So that this is the midline. The x-axis is actually the midline. Next, uh, second uh, step right here. We determine the phase shift by setting up the ones, e the ones inside the uh, parentheses equal to zero. So set that up equal to zero and solve for x. That is the phase shift. I put here in quotation marks starting point. So these are the starting point of the graph. So that is the phase shift. That's the starting point. I am putting in quotation mark is starting point. Actually, there's no starting point for uh, sine and cosine technically, but for one cycle, that's the starting point. No starting point because it goes to infinity. It goes to infinity. But a uh, starting point for one cycle is right there. Third step is to determine the period. Period is 2 pi over b. The b that we have over here is actually the b in front of the x. And the fourth period is we determine the end point by adding the... Um, phase shift, which is the second step, plus the period, which is the third step. Let's take the first example. So step one is to determine the amplitude. So the amplitude is, in this problem, it's two, the one in front. We take the absolute values. It doesn't really matter if it's positive or negative. Uh, it tells us how, how high or how low the wave is, but the amplitude right here is 2. Then we put the label to that. That's 2. Next to the amplitude is we find the midline K. K is right here. We have a negative 1. And then the second step here is to determine the starting point or the phase shift. This can be done by setting this up equal to 0 and solving for x. So 3x equals 0. We divide 3 from both sides, divide 3 here, 0 divided by 3, x is 0. So that is the starting point, the x at 0. Um, we have here the third step. So the third step is to determine the period. The formula for period is 2 pi over b. The b that we have here is the number in front of the x. So that would be 2 pi over 3. And so we can't actually reduce that, so we can keep this as our period. So period is 2 pi over 3. And then the fourth step is to find the end point. End point is equal to the, uh, the answer that we got on the second step, the uh, starting point. So it's a 0 plus. We add the period, which is 2 pi over 
3. So that means our endpoint is 2 pi over 3. So these are the important um, information that we need to know in order that we can sketch the graph of uh, y equals 2 sine 3x minus 1. Okay, we're now ready to sketch the graph. So the first thing that we are going to do is to draw the um, x and y axis. So that would be right here. Let's take that, the x and the y. The next thing that we are going to do is to uh, <clears throat> label the, uh, th remember there should always be five um, uh, five points here. So I'm just gonna, um, I'm just gonna divide this into five. So that's one and we take half in between that. That's the end point. That's the starting point. End point. And this is the middle, another middle and another middle. So there's like five of them. One, two, three, four, five. Starting point, end point. Okay, let's go back to the first step. In the first step, we have uh, amplitude is 2 and the midline is negative 1. So I can go ahead and label the uh, label the y-axis to just go to 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Then I go down 4 here. That's 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I went down 4. I went up 4. The next thing that we're going to do is to uh, draw the, again, we're, we're still on the first step. So we have um, k is negative 1. That means that our midline, instead of this as the midline, it's going to be on negative 1. So I'm going to uh, draw the midline right here. So this is the middle line. So I'm going to label this as the midline. So that's midline right here. Okay, the next step that we are going to do is to uh, label where the, uh, uh, the amplitude is. So from the midline, it says 2. That means how, how high or how low it can go. So 1 and 2, I put an arrow here. That's a mark that it should, that's, the, that's, that's like the border. It can't go down lower than this. Or 1 and 2, that's the mark that, that's the highest that it can get. Okay, so that's, uh, we already drawn the midline and the uh, uh, amplitude. Okay, so again, for the amplitude, I went up 2, I went down 2. Next, the starting point is at 0, so I label this as 0, that's the starting point. Then the end point is 3 pi over, so I'm going to use pencil to label. So that's going to be 0 for the starting point. The end point is, let's have this as 2 pi over 3. Now let's determine what is the, uh, what is this, what is the, um, how do we name this? It's 2 pi over 3, this is 0, but how do we name this side right here? In order to do that, I'm going to show the work over here. So we are going to get half of this. The fastest way to do it is to multiply this by one half or multiply this by 0 0.5 to get this part. So that is 2 pi over 3 times one half. That would be uh, 2 pi over 6. And we can reduce this to, um, that's going to be pi over 3. So this is pi over 3. Now let's have the next one right here. It's the same process. We're going to get half of this. So we're multiplying this by one half. We multiply this by one half. So that would be pi over 3 times one half. So that would be pi over 6. So this is pi over 6. Now this one is a little tricky right here. So we label all the first three, but the third one is a little tricky. So uh, first thing that we are going to do here is to add both of these together and multiply by two. So that would be pi over three plus two pi over three. And then whatever the answer we get, multiply it by one half. So then this would, they're like terms already. I mean, they have like, uh, they have the same denominator, so we're good. So we have, uh, this becomes three pi. So one pi plus two pi is three pi over three. This, that is times one half, which is equal to 
um, we can reduce this to just pi. So this becomes pi over two. So this one right here is pi over two. From here, we are now ready to sketch the graph. So first, it says that we are looking for sine. This is the shape of the sine function, and this is positive. So it's positive in front, so we're picking this, a positive sign. So there are dots around here. That's one, two, three, four, five dots. So I will draw the dots here. Uh, again, the midline is the green one. So that's the first dot. This is the second dot right here. This is the third dot. This is the fourth dot. I can't go lower than this. This is my marker. And then this is the last one. So the graph is going to look like this. there and it's gonna go here so it the midline is the one that is like our x-axis at this time that's it if you think this video is helpful please like and subscribe for more math videos see ya